Taking off. It's basically right on top of us right now. Three, two, one, go. Uh, this is the Menti, Menti 2. This is something that you can find on Amazon for $120. So I wanted to test this to make sure that, well, first it was worth $120. We know that parachutes are pretty expensive for drones. Now I wanna, I wanna give you a fair warning. This does not allow you to fly over people. The USB here, based on the instructions, says it has to be in the back of the drone in itself. And uh, this is valid for the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic Air 2, which is we're flying the Mavic Air 2 today. So this is what it's compatible with. Uh, I have everything on here that's ready to go. So let's just go out there and then uh, we can get started. This is the controller for it. I'll put my phone in it in a second and then we'll be good to go. So. So if anything, if you don't feel comfortable, I'd rather see the drone get hurt than you guys get hurt by all means. Okay, so the button is right here, so we're gonna double tap and hold. There you go. So blinking green is good. Not blinking green is not good. Taking off. All right, three. Two, one. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're back in the studio. I wanted to get back in the warm, quite frankly, uh, pretty cold out there in the morning, but uh, I wanted to give you kind of a follow-up on this uh, without having to explain it on the field, but uh, this is the parachute. It's right here. Uh, it's still in one piece, actually. The parachute in itself looks really good. Uh, everything in here, the cords look good and everything. And, uh, and this is the inside of the parachute right here. If you uh, can see, you probably can. It's a little bit difficult. I'll put a picture up for you. Um, there's there was a fire in here, which which is normal. This is normal operation. There is a, a pyro device in here that lights up and then pops the parachute. And it, and it was very easy to smell after we uh, deployed this thing. And the other thing is the cap right here on top is missing. So uh, I'll get to how we refill this thing and how we actually reuse it in the future. But I wanted to give you some, some data. Um, the drone, we started at 300 feet. We uh, shut down the motors at 300 feet and obviously it started falling immediately about 25 to 30 miles an hour when it went down and then it took about 50 feet for the parachute to sense that we were in free fall and then to start to deploy so that was around 250 feet and then it took another 50 feet for the the parachute to to uh, stabilize and and these numbers are actually not even rounded this is actually pretty much started exactly we were at 302 i think it deployed at 248 and i think it was pretty much stable based on the data that i saw uh, right around 200 feet plus or minus a couple feet so um pretty much spot on. So it takes about 100 feet total, if you think from the time that it deploys to the time that it kind of stabilizes and starts falling. It was falling at a speed of about 10 miles an hour um, average, and uh, the wind was actually pushing it. The, the, the wind is the one thing. We knew there was a little bit of wind. We knew there would probably be a little bit more wind higher up. And, um, and so we had started, you can hear me in the video say, uh, it's right on top of us right now because I knew uh, it wasn't really exactly on top of us. It was a little further, uh, us being me uh, flying and then Don who was flying the, the drone that was recording the footage. And, um, and I knew that when it deployed, it was gonna be basically flying away from us. It flew further away than I thought it would uh, at five to 10 miles an hour. We weren't able to catch it as you can see in the video, uh, but it still landed by itself, which is fine. Uh, in normal uh, operation, you wouldn't be able to catch it anyway, uh, I don't think. And um, no damage to the drone. It did really well, landed in the grass. 
uh, cleaned it up a little bit and it was ready to go. So uh, that was that was kind of the good news. Uh, the parachute in itself, and if you want to reuse the parachute, you're going to have to buy the device in here, the, the power component that's in here, and then it comes with a cap that you're going to put back on. You're going to have to fold this thing and, uh, and put it back inside of this device after you replace the power component. You can buy these on, I found them on AliExpress for $20 for the replacement component. You're gonna need one every time you deploy, okay? And then a parachute, if you need to change the parachute, I bought a couple of these, I bought three or four of them. I bought a couple of, uh, uh, I think one or two parachutes. It looks like it's in really good shape, so I'm not gonna replace this one for this time around. And then you can buy them, the parachute is $25. If you buy both of these things as a combo, it comes out to $40. So uh, that's, if, you, if you're thinking about the cost, $100, $120 on Amazon for the parachute, and then you can add another, uh, you know, 40, maybe not 40, but 20 to $40 every time you deploy. Now, obviously this is not for everyday deployment. This is not something that you're gonna use every single day. And, um, and I recommend that if you're going to deploy it or if you're gonna be using it and flying, I recommend that you fly at least 150 to 200 feet uh, above ground level so that it has enough time to deploy and then basically get to the ground. Obviously you saw it takes 100 feet, so you could be as low as 100 feet, but uh, again, you, you want a little bit more, a, more, a little margin of, of safety in here. This is not valid for applying for a waiver at the moment. It's not approved by the FAA. It doesn't meet the standards at this stage, but you can still use it on your drone. It is, it is perfectly legal and uh, just a, a great thing if you want to have it on your drone and, and uh, in case you have a motor failure, then it's going to save your drone. It's going to be a lot cheaper than coming down all the way to the ground. I need to continue testing it. Unfortunately, I didn't have the power uh, device in here to keep testing it. I want to test it in sports mode and see if it deploys actually in sports mode. Now, I want to give you a lesson learned lesson. <laughs> I want to share lessons learned uh, with what we did uh, during this test. The parachute in itself is a little bit tricky because the button right here, the USB button, the inside of the button in itself, and you may be able to see it as I'm pushing on the button here, the light turns up blue. Okay, and you have to hold it for a bit for this. It's a double tap and hold to turn it on. Now, I don't know what happened, but it was cold uh, and, and it was difficult to push on this button. And I thought it was turned on and it turns out that it wasn't. We did a first test and this is probably the image that you saw early on in the video and the parachute didn't deploy. Now, I, this is not the fault of the parachute. This is 100% my fault. Um, I did not set it up correctly. So when I shut down the motors, I should have gone through the checklist uh, several times. I should have verified several times, I should say. Uh, that it was actually uh, turned on properly. I thought I saw the green light that it's supposed to give you. And, um, and then we went up and we shut down the motors and it never deployed. So I'm gonna show you the footage of this in a second, but make sure, double check, triple check, this is lesson learned for me, uh, that you have the blinking green light and uh, when the parachute is turned on, and also make sure that when you take off and you get to the right altitude, make sure that you also have the green light still flashing before you go up and continue your flight. So uh, we lost a drone, uh, rest in peace, uh, the uh, Mavic Air 2, which is actually a Mavic Air 2 that DJI had sent us to, uh, to test. It's actually not dead. And, uh, and I just brought the drone, it's right here. The, um, it's amazing, quite frankly, it's amazing that this drone survived a crash. This is the drone right after the crash. The arms are still in one piece. From the footage, it landed on its back. It landed down this way. I checked the battery, the battery is not gluted, it's not in bad shape. Um, the, um, everything, the, the, the propellers are actually still good. Obviously I'm gonna change them before I go fly again once it's fixed but it landed on its top. The, the, the propellers are still looking good, uh, no cracks. The motors look like they're still working correctly. I, I checked the alignment and it looks like they're still spinning on all sides right here. And um, the only thing that broke is the gimbal. And uh, the gimbal, and it, it didn't even, surprisingly, it didn't even break all the way to the point where you think it would come apart. It's still in one piece and it actually still works. Uh, we were able to continue recording after uh, the, the crash happened and uh, the drone kept recording. So we have footage of the entire crash, which you'll see in a second. And, um, 
and there's only one little wire here that's broken, but it still works. The gimbal still turns on, so all I need to do is really change the gimbal and, uh, and then the plastic, and theoretically it would be ready to go. So we're gonna fix it, uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll uh, bring it back. This is gonna be our, our crash test dummy uh, going forward, because we have more of these tests to do. Obviously, we don't uh, plan on crashing anymore. This is not something that I like to do. This is not something that uh, should have happened in the first place, so uh, just the lessons learned. So. Uh, with that being said, let's go watch uh, the, this, the first flight. You watched the second flight already. Let's take a look at the first flight and then learn some lessons from it. Taking off. It's basically right on top of us right now. Three, two, one, go. 